Welcome to Unity Inspired Living. Our community began in 1989 as a small worldwide Unity book study group, and we've continued the momentum as an ever-evolving spiritual community. Each Sunday, you will find dynamic thought leaders delivering inspiring messages and talented musicians sharing sound healing through their melody. Here, we embrace ancient spiritual traditions, universal truths, and emerging wisdom. Let's check out this Sunday message. We're so grateful you've joined us. My name is Amy Van Ling, and I am gratefully in servant leadership as the spiritual director of this hmm, unique and powerhouse uh, loving community and Unity Inspire Living. And I'm so grateful for my time with each of you every single week, the beautiful people on our screen and the people that are streaming in that I see you on this screen. Um, I'm truly so uh, blessed to be with you. I, I feel that it is definitely a divine appointment and um, I'm so I'm so grateful to have this divine appointment with you each week. Our theme this month is adventure in acceptance, <clears throat> big swallow <laughs> with, with acceptance sometimes. Acceptance in general is a process of allowing things to be as they are without actively trying to change them or manipulate them or uh, make it different. And often we lean into this process of being with acceptance um, and it takes, it requires conscious effort, skill, wisdom, because it's not always uh, the, the reactionary. <laughs> it, it, sometimes in reaction, we want to just resist, right? Or blame or become angry, uh, which of course we know creates suffering. So saying yes to this adventure of acceptance um, is is a way to have a positive effect on your life. And psychologists now have done all these you know, studies and so that they have actually determined for us uh, through studies that the practice of acceptance really does lead to better mental health, personal growth, well-being, all of the good stuff. Lao Tzu said in the Tao Te Ching, acceptance is to be noble, to be whole, to be one with heaven and nature and with enduring with the enduring Tao. And the Tao means path through the way. Um, day means virtue and Ching means ancient texts. So that is means the path to virtue. And that's really to think of acceptance as the path to virtue is pretty profound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so being, being when we allow um, ourselves to be with this, the present moment, allow the present moment to exist, uh, we can begin to, um, you know, not suppress it or reject it, just come into peace with, with what is happening. And so, um, in other words, don't use your energy to push against what's showing up, uh, rather be with it, which brings us so beautifully into our deep dive today into don't fight with reality, which is Christopher's message for us today. And it is always my honor and great joy to welcome back the beloved Christopher Brown. He is a joy-filled, solid gold, divine loving presence, dear, very dear one to our community and to the world. And we are so very grateful for your presence here with us today. Um, in so very many ways you bless us. And the talk today is don't fight with reality. <laughs> so, um, you know, sometimes easier said than done, right? <laughs> We all can admit that. Uh, so, you know, coming into that place of, of really being in, a, in acceptance and, and, and present with what is. Uh, and there is a workshop today, as I mentioned earlier, it is how to ride the horse in the direction it's going. <laughs> the concept. <laughs> you know, and this goes deeper into why do we fight with, with reality and all of that. So following the talk today here on the live stream on Facebook, we will move into the Zoom room from 1130 to 1230 for this deeper dive into this workshop and everybody is invited. So be there for this really potent conversation. And thank you, Christopher, for bringing yourself to us today. We are always so truly grateful and blessed for you, for your presence, for the wisdom and love you share with us. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to drop the link to the um, workshop, the Zoom workshop in the Facebook live stream chat uh, toward the end of our, our time here on, on Facebook live stream. So, and it's also on our website, unityinspiredliving.org. You can jump right in there to our workshop at 1130 through there. We have this radiant, magnificent light, and we call her Brittany Gilmore. And she is gifting us with her glory, her greatness, her gifts of uh, oh, sound, amazing sound healing. She's sharing her tender essence, her joyful, soulful, uh, musical creativity with us this morning. And we are always so deeply grateful for you, for your time, for your energy, and for your your vibration, your sound vibration, your voice, all of it just, it takes us away. And we are so grateful for your sacred guests. Thank you for being here with us this morning. We have our bright spirited, loving, solid pillar, Jan Knight with us this morning. She is uh, just an amazing light to our community and she uplifts us and inspires us. And she's here to share our community announcements our inspirational reading, and our prayer of plentitude this morning. So thank you, Gian, for saying yes and being here and for having me, <laughs> hosting me in your home. <laughs> I'm so grateful for your graciousness and your hospitality at all, always when I'm here. So we welcome you in, Christopher, Brittany, Jan, and I welcome you into this sacred sanctuary with us this morning. We are so grateful for you. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for committing your time, your energy, and your heart to co-creating this space because it is felt. It matters. It makes a difference. We feel you. We love you. We bless you. We're so grateful for you. So as you um, enter this um, this space, this, this um, sacred place, I would like you to allow yourself to tune in just a little more deeply open up just a little more widely <laughs> expansively and notice what you tune into today when you're in this space when you allow yourself to really come from a place where you notice that everything is working in your favor where you are a portal to receive a download of spirit and divine guidance and wisdom and with just a little willingness, your whole trajectory can can shift. Um, be with that here and now. Recognize that you are a gift. Your life is a gift. And honor your breath. As we drop into our heart space and move into our community song, which I would like to remind you, when you sing out loud, you move energy through your chakras, through your body. You can move at stuck energy you can open your throat chakra and definitely music opened your heart chakra so you love this song we know this song i am light i'm gonna hand the screen over to Brittany. take us away into the light thank you thank you thank you i am so happy to be here and yes we know this one if you don't know all the words you'll definitely pick up the chorus it's just affirm that together i am light skin on 
Always a favorite. I think Me you know too. every word in that song is perfect. It's one totally. of those songs where the whole entire song you love. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Brittany. Thank we love you. We appreciate you, for, you. Thank you for singing with me. I did. I always have to check my mute, make sure I'm muted. So I'm singing so loud. I'm like, wait a minute, make sure I cannot be heard. Goodness. Well, thank you, dear one. We're so grateful for you. I am going to hand the screen over to Jan now. She has our inspirational reading and our community announcements for us. Thank you so much, Jan. Yes. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to have Amy as my house guest. And so we're we're uh, we're sending you love from both corners of my house today. Okay, so let's begin with a few announcements, and uh, I, I want to remind you of what Amy just said, that Christopher is having a workshop, and it's called, again, How to Ride the Horse in the Direction It's Going, and it's going to be from 1130 to 1230, so we always, always with Christopher, we come from a place of curiosity and wonder, and I, what you can find the Zoom link on our website, or Amy is putting it in the chat, so i uh, Remember to, uh, you know, spend the last hour with us from 1130 to 1230 today. And then save the date for next week, uh, next Sunday, in person at the Antioch Community Center in the West Island Room. And uh, we'll all be there in person with Reverend D. Jacqueline Edwards. And she's going to be our guest speaker. And you won't want to miss her or her interactive workshop afterwards. And it's always very, very thought-provoking and inspirational. So we're looking forward to that. And um, next Sunday, remember when you come to bring your recyclables and also bring your food and donations for the food bank. Uh, we call it loaves and it's called loaves and fishes. So remember that as well. And know that we are always sending out a huge heartfelt thank you. I hope you can feel the vibration of thanksgiving and gratitude to all of you who are continuing to support the Mitchell Van Ling Family Memorial Fund each month. And uh, I invite you to take uh, to make your donations in check or Zelle or PayPal to that fund no later than two days before the end of the month, which is coming up pretty soon. So I encourage you to continue to do that. And um, other events coming up, if you're interested in hosting one of our third Saturday uh, community circles and potlucks, give me a call or give Nancy a call. We are so grateful for our those of those in our community who host our our um, Saturday circles and Saturday potlucks. And uh, there's also a new book group that's I think this is week three of Robin Chatham's a book group called Building a Non-Anxious Life by John Deloney. And you're welcome to join, even though you know it's it's already started, but you're welcome to join that and just go go to our website and you'll find all the information about it. Okay. And always we encourage you to like and share our Facebook page and our YouTube page every time you visit them. It really helps our what numbers i guess or something it helps something yeah our algorithms i guess 
anyway, so it does, totally makes a difference. So blessings and have a wonderful uh, week as you uh, end this month with the theme of acceptance, which leads adventures in acceptance, which leads us into our inspirational reading. And actually, I picked two, and then I'm trying to go back and forth about which one. But yesterday, I found I was reading the Daily Word, and it's it's called Changes. And the as the affirmation is, I flow with life's changes. And I thought, this is pretty appropriate for uh, acceptance. So I'm sharing with you yesterday's Daily Word uh, called Changes. From the ticking of a clock, to the movement of molecules, life is in a constant state of motion and adjustment. Sometimes I feel unsettled and anxious when faced with shifting circumstances. Consciously connecting with the eternal presence of God in prayer and meditation gives me comfort and strength to let go of fear and anxiety and to accept life just as it is. When I think of the transitions I have been through, <clears throat> I remember how many led to positive experiences, even the ones that didn't become my greatest opportunities for growth. That awareness helps me when things break down or fall apart and I'm called to rebuild and start anew. I move forward knowing my innate resiliency is supporting me as I accept the unknown with faith and courage. And from Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Mm. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jan. I agree. That was perfect. Absolutely perfect. Thank you for you and your discernment. Okay, I am handing the screen back over to Brittany this morning. We have, I am willing. Is it I am willing right now? Yeah, yes. that's right. Thank you, Beloved. Um, thank you. And thank you for that reading, Jan. Um, so I love this theme this week, acceptance. This is something that I'm actively working on right now in my life. And uh, this song, I just learned it this week. I had, I didn't know it before, um, but it is called I'm, I Am Willing. And, you know, it brings up all kinds of things come up in life and all kinds of um, hardships happen. But it's just the affirmation to stay open and to stay willing. I am open. I am willing to be hopeless would seem so strange it dishonors those who go before us so lift me up to the light of change there is hurting in my family there is sorrow in my town and there is panic across the nation and there is wailing the whole world around but i am open and i am to be hopeless would seem so strange. It dishonors those who go before us. So lift me up to the light of change. May the children see more clear. change caress us 
us even if it burns our eyes cause I am open and I am willing to be hopeless would seem so strange it dishonors those who go before us so lift me to the light of change give me a mighty oak to hold my confusion give me a desert to hold my fears give me a sunset to hold my wonder give me an ocean to hold my tears for I am open and I am willing to be hopeless would seem so strange it dishonors those who go before us so lift me up to the Um, once in a while, I'm speechless after Britney songs, and that's one of them. It's a beautiful song. Wow. And so simple, but such an amazing message, too. <clears throat> May the winds of change caress us, even if it burns our eyes. Whoa. Hello. Yeah. I love the chorus, though. Lift me up to the light of change. Wow. May I be open and willing to be hopeless. Think about that for a minute. Talk about an adventure and acceptance. That was a perfect choice. You always pick the perfect choice. <laughs> you know, it it just happens. I know it does. Truly. I know it, it always, does. It just aligns and it's so divine. <laughs> oh, I know it does. It's always so perfect. But that is that is quite something of a song. <laughs> Thank you, Brittany, for always being open to the download and the spirit and bringing it to us and saying yes, because that is your your willingness to uh, to be open, to be the vessel. So thank you. Mm, we receive was that was big. Thank you. Everybody, I love you. I, I, I was I was watching you log in earlier, and I, I know I didn't uh, say hello, but I see you all. Jennifer and Dave and Michael J. And uh, where did my feed go? Mimi was here. Kathy. For some reason, it slowed down. But I saw all of you. I saw you coming in. And I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing your energy and your hearts to this space. Uh, we see you. We love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. I'm going to hand the screen over to Jan now. She has our prosperity blessing, our our prayer of plentitude for us this morning. Thank you so much, Jan. We love you. Wow, Brittany. I just kept thinking the same thing that Amy just said. What a perfect song for adventure and acceptance. I am willing to be hopeless. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a concept. I am willing to be hopeless. I I kept thinking I'm willing to be accepting no matter what. I just wanted to add those words to the song. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Wow, that was powerful. Perfect. Okay, so uh, now I invite you to, with that song in mind, let's um, let's just take a minute to move inside, to take a breath, Maybe even close your eyes, take another breath, and move into this space of oneness with spirit. Join me in this space. So we quiet our minds and we open to the great realization of this most abundant, amazing universe. We connect with an inner stillness and a quiet that is grounded in the divine flow of giving and receiving. That circle of giving and receiving. We practice gratitude, 
for all that life gives us, all that life gives us, and accept that there is more coming our way. And we're just ready to accept it. We align and operate from our divine nature to give freely from a compassionate heart to ourselves, to others, assured that we are never void, that there is always enough and more. We set our intention to engage in right action that attracts opportunities to prosper and to grow abundantly. We are each a very grateful spirit expanding in our human lives. We are gratefully succeeding in stepping forward always into greater good. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, precious one. We're grateful to be in this space. Thank you for holding the sacred space. Okay, I'm going to hand the screen back over to Brittany. I think we're going into Stand By Me. Yeah. Yay. So this, this should be a familiar tune, um, but I love this one. It It's really uh, honoring the connection and the importance of connection and community and that no matter what we're going through, we'll be okay if we have each other. And we could be talking to another person. We could be talking to a divine spirit as long as you're standing by me. I'm going to be okay. When the light is gone And the land is dark And the moon is the only light we see Just as long as you stand, stand by me. So darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me, oh darling. Stand by me, stand by me. If the sky should crumble and fall and the mountains will tumble to the sea I won't cry I won't cry no I won't shed a tear just as long as you stay stand by me so don't And I'll stand by you. Oh, we love you. Thank you for bringing I such beauty too. to us and goosebumps and inspiration and moments of truly being in touch with the spirit. Mm. Um, Brittany, thank you for you. Thank you for being the gift of you in the world. Thank you both, Jan and Brittany, for bringing your precious, glorious divine souls to us this morning and setting the tone, the tune, the energy, the vibration of this space. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for bringing yourselves to us and to the world. We are blessed in so many ways by both of you. Mwah. Thank you. I will see you on this side of our screen. <laughs> I love you Thank both. You. Bless you.
Christopher, thank you for being with us. We are so grateful to have you in our presence. Um, I traveled this morning and realized that I don't have Christopher's bio with me, but I know it is one of my favorites because he is such a pure soul and he ends his bio with, we are all walking each other home. And I love that because it's such um, a reminder of the gift of this life that we have, that we are together here walking each other home. And what's more important than that in this life? So thank you for being with us today, Christopher Brown. You bless us in so many ways, a myriad plethora of ways each and every time you say a sacred yes to being here with us. We love you and we appreciate you. And thank you for your connection to our community because you are so dear to us. I'm going to pray us in if, um, if everybody allows that space. And then I'm going to hand the screen over for our talk this morning because we are going to stop fighting with reality. <laughs> and this is going to be amazing. So I invite you to close your eyes if that feels comfortable for you. Take a deep inhale if that feels cleansing to you. And feel into this space. We are so grateful and thankful to answer the call today to, to join together in this sacred space and in, into the sacred moment in love, in love, tuning into the compassionate, kind soul beings, energetic beings that we are, that we came to be, that we came to share, celebrating the divinity that we are, each one of us expressing deep, heartfelt gratitude and knowing that we are one, holy and whole, walking each other home. And we know that by adventuring in acceptance and peace and joy and gratitude, we create a loving community and society and world. And we are so grateful to be on this mission together and so deeply blessed by the presence and essence of Christopher Brown with us this morning. And we open our hearts and our souls to receive the message for today. We release our word, this word, this potent, beautiful, powerful, loving word with love, in love and totally for love. And so it is. Ashe, amen. Namaste. Thank you, Christopher Brown. I am handing the screen over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Um, it's really good. It's great to be back here. Um, I always, I, I so enjoy this community and I really look forward to the workshop. Um, this topic is probably my my actually my favorite because it's the doorway to true spirituality it is the core thing that opens the doors into everything when you accept what is so what is actually going on and you stop fighting it it opens up energy for something different to happen if you've ever noticed when you fight with reality you always lose. You always lose. I mean, it's reality. And your opinion about reality, reality doesn't care. Get over yourself. You know, it's like when you fight with the rain, the rain wins. You get wet. Uh, when I cut the board too short, the board laughs. It doesn't care if I feel one way or another about it. You know, and what when I cut the board too short, you know, I can beat myself up and I used to. I, ah, you stupid, why didn't you measure that again? Were you sure? You knew it was going to be too short. Why did you cut it? You're going to spend blah, blah, blah. this whole story arises. How necessary is that story? The reality is the board's too short. Get over it, get another board, cut it right. Done. As soon as I accept it, I can move into productive action. Otherwise, I'm spinning my wheels, blaming, pointing a finger, whining, complaining, and demanding 
that life should should have been different. What's well, not? And as soon as I can actually settle into that acceptance that whatever my thoughts are about reality isn't gonna affect reality. Reality just is. And so I first heard this with Werner Erhard back in the 70s in the S training. And he said, happiness is a function of accepting what is. Your sense of well-being in life depends upon your acceptance of things exactly the way they are, not the way you'd like them to be, not the way they are supposed to be or could be, but the way they are. Because once they're accepted for the way they are, then there's energy that can free up. You're not fighting it anymore. The energy now moves into productive moving forward. You free up energy. Energy, this acceptance isn't, doesn't happen in the mind. It's not, you don't think your way to acceptance, but you can be open and curious. Who's fighting this? Why is it taking so long to surrender to what I know I'm gonna to have to do anyway? Um, you know, it's like the reality is, you know, my house needs being cleaned up. I don't wanna do it. I've got stuff in the basement in the back room over at Jan's place or somewhere that I need to clean it out. <laughs> I don't wanna do it. And so I'm fighting it when I know it's gonna happen, but it's when. As soon as I accept that this is what needs to be done, it frees up the energy. That's a real important distinction. I want to make sure. And when you know, you know something goes click inside, it's a body experience. You know you're going to do it now. And you're going to make that effort to do the cleaning or to recut the board or to accept the rain. You're on your way. But why does it take so long? <clears throat> I was in uh, New Mexico in 19, <clears throat> no, excuse me, <laughs> 2006 at the first Enlightenment Conference. Um, and that's where I met, and this was in December, and that's where I met Isaac Shapiro. Uh, brilliant, brilliant being. And in December, it snows. And I'm hearing the congregants, and there must have been 500 people at this, this conference. It was huge. People are complaining about the snow. Well, hello, folks. It's Santa Fe. It's 7,000 feet. It snows in December. Get over it. But no, I heard this complaining. I don't want to go out. And of course, everybody does go out, and they experience the snow. But I was noticing there was resistance to it. And then I hear what he says in his very free, opening remarks. His opening remarks were, Isaac, I always remember this, this, it went ka-chung in the body. It just went, wham! All suffering is the result of not wanting the experience you're having right now. All suffering. You can't suffer in the future. You can only suffer right now. And so all suffering is, is not wanting to have the experience you're having right now. You're pushing away whatever experience that is, whatever thoughts are coming up or emotions you're in resistance to. I went, that's brilliant. It's only that simple. We forget that we only live and have our life in this moment. But you know, we're always in the past or the future. We're never really in this moment. So when we actually stop and become curious, what's alive and moving in this moment? What is present in this moment? It's the only emotion or whatever that's happening will be happening in the moment. And that can be explored. Oh, I'm feeling anxious. I don't want to go out in the snow. I think I'm going to get wet. That's a story. 
what's really true? Well, actually, I'm sitting in my seat right now and I'm listening to Isaac and everything's okay. We'll go with that. You can see the, how you can scare yourself when you move into the future. When you move into the future, that's where fear is. Anger lives in the past because it shouldn't have been that way. But fear is in the future. Resistance about what is my future going to be. It's very important to get that. And so, When we don't want to have the experience that we're having, there we are. We're balled up in a fight. We've got our sword out. We're swinging. We want to make the world. We want to change whatever's going on, and we're going to do it with our sword. Well, good luck. It was the panda and the cat. And the panda was a very wise panda. He lived in China and his <clears throat> student was the cat. Very curious cat. People knew the panda as an enlightened master. Well, the panda and the cat were on their way to visit the giant wise tree in the forest, but it was a three day journey. This was their second day and they were on the mountain. A very small, narrow path, dangerous path. It was raining and it was windy. The cat was very cold. And he turned to the panda and said, Panda, if you had three wishes, what would they be? And the panda stopped. And in the wisdom of the panda, he said, or she said, I would choose to be on this mountain. I would choose to be in the rain and the wind. And I would choose to be here with you. And the cat stopped. The cat was not expecting that answer. The cat was expecting to be the, the idea of being war by a warm fire and with kibble and something comfortable and didn't want to be wet and soggy and this dangerous mountain. And the cat said, why did you choose that? He said, because this is the only life I have is in this moment. Why not choose what I have and what has been gifted to me now? Why not choose that? I have no fight with what's going on now. I am curious, how is this going to turn out? What's going to happen next? How are we going to get out of this? Are we going to survive? And so the cat learned something that day. The cat learned not to resist what's actually happening. You don't have to embrace it, but you can become more curious. Well, what's going on now? And are you OK now? And the truth was the cat was just miserable. But he was okay. He was wet and cold, but he was still okay. <laughs> so we have these pre made stories that pop up when we get wet, when we get cold, when we get uncomfortable. We don't like discomfort. We want it to be different. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I want it to be different too. But when I accept that this is the way it is, it frees up energy to maybe do something different, is to stop fighting it. There was this woman and she went out into the lake on this boat to meditate. She paddled out, she got herself in her cushion and got just right and she was really comfortable and she was becoming very silent. There was almost no wind on the lake. It was beautiful, it was perfect. And she couldn't, she couldn't um, imagine a more perfect time. This was going to be it. She was going to, Nirvana was right in sight. So she had set herself up 20 minutes into it. She's doing great. Boom. Something hits her boat. Damn, what is that? How could that be? There's nobody else out here. What is disturbing my meditation? And she starts fighting with this. 
Here she's trying to be peaceful and she noticed she's out of control, opens her eyes and looks and it's an empty boat. There's nobody in the boat. The boat has drifted silently and banged into her boat. All of the steam that she had to blame somebody and to blame life and everything just popped right there. There's nobody to blame. It's just life. It's just the way it moves. This is powerful. I want you to get this story. It's the way life moves. Boats move by the wind also. It's the way of nature. It's the way nature moves. It's constantly moving. And so she learned a powerful message that day to accept whatever comes, whatever comes. And disturbing her meditation was the gift because she got the realization that her anger popped up automatically. She didn't cause I mean, it was an automatic response that was within her. She got a chance to witness it. She became curious with it. And without much more going on, she was able to go back into meditation, but at a whole different level, knowing that she could accept whatever came, whatever came. In Zen, they call it the second arrow. The first arrow, and I'm sure many of you have heard this, the first arrow is circumstances. The circumstances in this situation was the boat hit her boat. Anger came up. That was the second arrow. The reality is the first arrow was a very gentle arrow. It was a bump on the boat. Not much, just a little bump. But the second arrow, that's what we do to ourselves. We shoot ourselves with the second arrow of resistance. <laughs> and so here she is shooting herself with the second arrow. It shouldn't have been this way. There shouldn't be anybody. You, you get the idea. We shoot ourselves with the second arrow. We have many, many empty boats that bump into us. And we think that they shouldn't be bumping into us. And we fight against them. And as soon as we start fighting against them, we will lose because they are real and our thoughts and our patterns and our habits are just thoughts, patterns, and habits. We are the ones that need to adjust, not reality. So we, and we're gonna go over this in the workshop, the empty boats that come and go in our lives. <laughs> True acceptance, true acceptance is not something of the mind. True acceptance is something of the body. I turned 40 and I was in the middle of this huge construction project and I was working like a third world donkey, whipping myself. And I hurt my back. I hurt it really good. And I had all of the stress of all of the jobs and all of this. And I went to doctor after doctor after doctor and chiropractors and herbals and psychics and everything. It's just 15 years later, I'm now 55 years old. I have con contemplated suicide, contemplated drugs. I've contemplated all of this stuff. There was no relief. And I heard something on the, on the radio, this psychic, she happened to live in San Jose. I said, something in me said, call her. I did go down and visit her. I walk in, I sit at her table in this little, you know, little two bedroom apartment. Very, just very plain, very plain lady sits down and looks at me and says, I can see you're in pain. And I can also see that you've been going down this hallway with a hundred doors. And you keep looking in those doors, trying to find the answer. Do you know what that means? I said, I absolutely know exactly what that means. Do you know what you need to do? I said, yes. She said, good. 
because I know now you will not find the answer in any of those doors you're looking at. So what are you gonna do? I'm gonna give up. She said, right on. There's nothing else you can do. And so this was, this was so powerful. Something in my body went could chunk. I knew at that moment that there was nothing I could do. I had done everything to heal myself, except give up. This was the last piece that I needed to learn and damn, I was dumb. It took me that long. I was waiting for my life to be better so I could really live it. I was waiting to be healed before I could get on with it. I couldn't accept it the way I was. Now I'm probably the only one. I'm sure there's many of us out there that are still waiting for it to be a certain way before we can really jump in with two feet. That day was a pivotal point. I said, enough, I am healed. And this is what it looks like. I am healed, this is what it looks like. And when anyone would ask me, how is your back doing? I would say, I'm healed, I'm doing great. Even though there was pain, I'm healed, I'm doing great. And something, I don't know what happened, but I started feeling better. It was about two weeks I noticed I'm not in the same pain I was in. I'm saying, wow, this is pretty good. I can live like this. And as I continued to say, I can live like this and was excited and was curious, well, what's gonna happen next? Even if the pain would return, I know that I can live like this. My life shifted. My friends and the way they related to me shifted. I was no longer reinforcing. I was no longer fighting the fact that I was deficient, that I had back pain, that I wasn't worthy or whatever that was. That disappeared. And that is huge, really, really huge. I couldn't have done that from the tower of thinking. Something much deeper had to hear that. Had to, I had to be sort of told that something had to pop, like when I open my eyes and I see that it's an empty boat. Something that day opened and saw the empty boat, that I was doing this to myself by resisting. From that day forward, I simply let go and embraced even the pain. I no longer fought it. I laid my sword down that day. And as Warner would say, happiness is a function of accepting what is. That day I accepted it, not mentally, but at a full body level. I accept this, even this. And if we can do that, think of what's in store for us. The biggest challenges in our lives will be coming. Old age, death. There could be suffering in there. It depends upon how much we accept and how willing we are to accept life as it moves, as the empty boats bump up against us in life. Happiness is a function of accepting what is, and that means all of it, accepting your life exactly the way it is right now. This is part of the workshop. How do we accept this exactly the way it is when we have stories? It shouldn't be this way, or it could be better. But what if we were just to relax and to be grateful for this that has been given, for this life exactly the way it is? Let's take this into prayer. As we take a breath together, easily, and in gratitude, we thank this body. And we thank our mind. And we thank our curiosity. 
And we simply rest in the knowing that as we move into the flow of life, and as we gently, so gently let go of resistance to this flow, that we are carried along by the stream, by the flow of life. We are supported when we stop fighting. I claim and accept that caring, floating, hell being held by the flow of life. I support and I accept that for each of us. So as of today, each of us has heard something in this message that will allow us to be more peaceful, allow us to accept life more easily. And I anchor that allowance within each of us. And so in gratitude, in gratitude for all the gifts that have been given, for this life exactly the way it is, I say, blessings, let it be so. Let it be so, and so it is. Mm. And so it is. In gratitude, let it be. You know, I've often said, uh, you know, if I had a magic wand, I'd give it to you, but what I what I do call the magic wand is gratitude. <laughs> gratitude um, is a magic wand to be in gratitude for whatever is showing up to truly see it with the eyes that everything is sacred. Everything is unfolding in your favor for your good. Even when it might not appear that way in the moment. And I mean, you spoke to this, you said, I was doing this, this as the suffering to myself by resisting and then you said enough i am healed and when you said that it's like that is so profound because sometimes that's the moment you know we have to just say to ourselves enough enough of this story enough of this uh trudging through the muck and the mire and focus 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 on the thing i don't want enough and then shift course yeah, shift happened if it was beyond my control. Mm. See, uh, we, what I forgot to say is that we're all wanting to control our lives. I mean, that's the whole purpose is to get our needs met and to control and this and that as opposed to allow. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a big difference there, big, big difference. Huge difference, huge difference to surrender to to what I don't know. It's because our brain, it's the, it's the survival part of our brain that needs to know because it's like, we well, have to control this. So you know what's happening next. That's how you survive. But to really surrender to the spirit, to, to what's unfolding. Um, it takes, it takes a lot of, uh, trust and allowance. You know, when we allow that present moment to exist just as it is, instead of fighting because it takes so much energy to to be in that resistance right to be yes. in that fight of i don't want this how do i change this how do i manipulate this in a way that makes it right you know my right not your right <laughs> you know it takes so much energy so when we finally just say enough we allow ourselves to just be with the moment of what's important without attempting. And it's not even about denying what's happening or suppressing it or rejecting it. But it's, it's just saying it is, it's just, it just is. And I know, I know that just rolls off the tongue so smoothly. <laughs> so I get it. Like the lady in the boat, you know, like what is happening here with the boat? Did you mean? And then she says, it's just the way life moves. Wasn't that a beautiful line? It's just the way life moves constantly moving and so she was just going into i'm accepting whatever comes um let me check into the feed right now because i'm sure there's a lot of thoughts comments drop your questions comments thoughts into the chat um luinda says wow very powerful message today christopher it's something i've been working on for some time now thank you for your valuable insight about resistance yeah, thank you, Luinda, for receiving um, receiving the message. You know, sometimes we don't even realize we're in resistance, you know? 
we just is that true yeah like we could just go oh. go there like an automatic autopilot so it does take that, yeah. <laughs> takes that skill that awareness to uh that consciousness that's why we practice that's why we have our practices that's where the rubber meets the road right <laughs> when it's all hitting the fan oh that's why i have my practice i get to come back and and move through and sometimes it takes time right sometimes it takes you going through 100 doors right that's part of the process too at times that's part of the journey like who's to say i'm i can't say what everybody's what i would might call a soul contract your 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 purpose for this incarnation you know to to walk through 100 doors so i think yeah there's so much in this. I, I also love this topic. We both resonate there. We have the same resonance about acceptance because it's such the key. It's the golden ticket, like Charlie. <laughs> um, okay, let me go back here. Jan says, dear Christopher, happiness is a function of accepting life just as it is right now. Woo. That reminder is going on my bathroom mirror. See you at the workshop so I can go deeper. Mm. Michael J says, yes, yes, trust. Acceptance, all so simply beautiful. I accept all. God is all. I let go. Mm. Yeah, surrender is uh, freedom. And it's also part of the practice. Well said. Not well said. There, there's something about the let go. Um, when we let go, if you can imagine how much energy it takes to hold on to that bar mm. that you're holding on to. And when you let go, it's it's you don't want to. It's become familiar. Your hands have taken this position. But when you let go finally, it's like, oh. Yeah. There's a full body relaxation. And that's what was experienced. And it's like that's something that I remember. Yeah. So, so you said go. you said acceptance is in the body. You said that line today. Oh, yeah, yeah, you said that. Those words. It's, it's a body function. Mm -hmm. It's not a mental function. Yeah. And it, it's like, you know, we, we accept things. When we really accept things, the body knows. The mm -hmm. body knows, and you know that you know. Mm -hmm. It's not just a, it's just not a mental thing. You know what? It's so, it's so true. There's, there's a book and I know many of you watching know, but maybe some of you don't, it's called the body keeps the score. Hmm. And it talks about this. It talks about when we hold on to, so, uh, you know, Gabor Mate, he talks about how, when the, the trauma, the traumatic thing that happened, isn't the trauma it's what how you hold it in your body how you perceived it how you took it in right and so the body keep the score book talks about okay so now you're holding that and where you hold that in your body your body is keeping the score of that and so when you're talking about acceptance as being body thing you know it's in the body that makes so much sense to me because i know this dynamic about how we hold emotions and trauma and experiences and energy right and so that's so true what you're saying. Coming into allowance and acceptance is that letting, releasing. It's whether you call that the purging or however you let go, surrender, let go of the bar. You feel it physically. Yeah, you do. And it does make a difference energetically, mm -hmm. uh, very much so. So Pat says, yes, resistance puts us also into victimhood. Yeah, for sure. For sure, right? Because then you have to have um you have to have a, a victim and a and you know a villain, right? In that story. Yep. Yep. Um Kathy says, yes, I appreciate the affirmation. I'm not sure what that was for, but yes, I feel it. <laughs> uh, Michael J says, Christopher, thank you. I am grateful. Um, did she say workshop? Yes, there's a workshop in about 22 minutes. And it's going to be amazing. It is how to ride the horse in the direction it's going. People, sometimes we just want the horse to go every other direction, but the direction it's going. 
So this is going to be wonderful. Um, Hi, Joe. Joe says, thank you, Christopher, for your powerful message, especially sharing your personal experience and struggle for several years until you let go. Yes, thank you for, you know, it's something that is just always so beautiful. And I appreciate about you, Christopher, is your authenticity and you're willing to really share vulnerability with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the power, that's the power in your teaching. So thank you. Thank you for being you. I'm so grateful. Jan says, yes, see you there at the workshop. Kathy says, Michael asked about workshop. And I said, yes. Yeah. So yes, feel that workshop. We're getting there. Um, okay, beloveds. I am so grateful for this time together. I am so grateful for you. I am so grateful for you, Christopher. I'm feeling just, oh, the cup overfloweth. <laughs> so the workshop is happening at 1130 Pacific time. And that is in 21 minutes. So I'm going to encourage you to get a nourishing snack, hydrate, and come back to the Zoom room where we all are going to gather. If you can think of anybody who could really feel into acceptance right now, invite them. Everybody is always welcome to our workshops. The more, the merrier. I'm going to drop the link here in the <clears throat> Facebook live stream feed. It's also on our website, unityinspiredliving.org. You will see a picture of Brittany, Christopher, and then the link into the Zoom uh, workshop. So thank you. Thank you. If you feel refreshed, restored, revitalized, encouraged, loved on this morning by this community, please consider visiting our giving page uh, on our website, Unity Inspired Living. Our center is 100% supported by your generous contributions. And we are so deeply, deeply grateful for that um, because it says to us, you value the purpose and the mission of this organization and you say yes to co-creating with us. And we're so grateful for that because it just brings us the most joy, excitement um, and, and peace and love to share with the world. So thank you for your support in all the ways you do that in so many ways, myriad of ways. So we are gonna close with the prayer of divine awakening. I'm gonna put it on that, share it on the screen right now. And I encourage you, invite you to speak these words and make this a declaration for your life. And that is coming right up right now, the prayer of divine awakening on your screen. And let me see on Facebook. It should be there. Yep, yep, yep. It's a new day, a beautiful day, a new beginning. I embrace this day with new eyes and open heart and expansive mind. I choose my vibrational frequency deliberately and consciously harmonizing with life's events. I am receptive to source energy divine guidance and wisdom available to me at all times. I commit to serve unconditional love fully and completely. I move forward in a state of appreciation, an extension of the one magnificent power and presence. I am sovereign, whole, and free, claiming dominion over my life as I go in peace and awaken to my divinity. And so it is, Ashe, Shine on, bright beings of love. I love you dearly. Shine, shine, shine your bright light. Thank you, Christopher Brown, for you. We are so grateful for your divine essence. Mwah. Blessings, everybody. We'll see you in the workshop in just a few minutes. Bye-bye.